Hi folks, I hope the focus is okay on this. It's the biggest I've done so far. It's uh, 28 inches by 18 and a half inches. That's all that is in metric. Uh, it's uh, oh, well, it's 72, 73 centimetres by 47 centimetres. So it's quite large. Uh, there, there was another painting this frame. Now a bit of advice. Uh, paint if you're going to do this sort of thing, or oil paints, acrylics. Get your frames first and paint your pictures to your frame, the size of your frame, not the other way around. <coughs> Otherwise, you'll have to you'll end up cutting bits off of it. So paint for the size of the frame, not the other way around. Don't just do a picture then look around for a frame for it that doesn't fit. I've given it, given the. Uh, <laughs> two millimeter MDF sheets, uh, a couple of coats of household uh, emulsion. I haven't got any, just so I could go and buy some. <clears throat> so, if you want to help contribute to the cost of all this, you can uh, go by PayPal or or um, Patreon, uh, not compulsory, of course. Uh, right, I'm using, uh, well, I'm going to use. Uh, th some basic colours, see the uh, sap green and red ochre. <coughs> no, this is light red, I've changed my mind, I've put some light red out there. I like the red ochre, but I'm, I'm using too much of it, and that won't last much longer. <coughs> so I've got some ultramarine and some cadmium red as well, and a bit of ochre, yellow ochre. So I want a bit of a darkish sky here and there, so let's get some some paint on the brush. So let's go with a bit of bit of the ultramarine, a bit of the red, and just bung someone. Let's go a bit mad. You can mix in a bit of paint spray, which I might do. So it's a bit wobbly. I've got it back, This the 2mm backed up with the painting that was in the frame. It was in a bit of a, on a hardboard, it was, a, it was sort of based on a Seago painting that I did many years ago. Right, let's get a bit of, let's add a bit of Payne's Grey so that, Payne's Grey, where are you gone? Come on, where are you? Payne's Grey. Oh. Amazing that you want it, you can't find it. It's probably on the floor somewhere. Paints grey, come on. I can do without the paints grey by just using uh, the light red, which I will want in, in that ultramarine. So it's just a bit of dark. I've clipped this, the, the board's a bit bendy, so I've put a couple of clips each side, it shouldn't show up in the frame. I don't want to spend too much time on this one, but it's being large. Well, I'll clean the brush and go in with a bit of landscape. <clears throat> <coughs> I might at some stage add a couple of farm buildings, but I don't want to uh, insist on that with myself because I, I like the landscape as it is, unspoiled, although all our landscape in, in the UK has been farmed at some stage, so it's shaped by sheep grazing, uh, clearances and so on. All right, uh, let's get some nice sap green and some nice, nice red. Red. A 
plenty of oil. You've got to have the have it all ready to sort of go. But the 16 by 12 I have been working on because I was using up some MDF is um, is too just too small really. Let's just get that in there. Bit of a meadow. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to put a bit of light around those these trees. The light in the middle there. Okay, now we can start to build up. So we've got a, some trees. I think we have, with that tree there, we're falling off the edge of the uh, painting, so we'll have to change that. As often as not, I paint my trees right down to the ground, but but they have some uh, some legs, don't they? Oh, well, they're a bit annoying, but. No, I mean, it's quite nice with uh, with the, uh, the sap green. So I'll make this side a bit bigger than the other side, I think. I think this council will produce a, a ground of burnt umber. All his uh, paintings. So that the so the when you put, you put the green on it, it counter changed well not counter changed, it um it was just a complementary colour to the green that was going on top. So I'll we'll put some green over that we'll it's all to be so in there, let's get some depth in there. Right, uh, change, change the brush. You need quite a few of these brushes I found, these are better quality ones. They, I use the um, 
the rough ones for the texturing. Uh, these were cheap, but these these ones are about four pounds pro art. I've just ordered a couple of two inch ones uh, online, and they were about eight pound fifty or something like that for the two free postage. Um, so so the, I've got some in the, in in the uh, washing powder liquid, washing powder diluted that is, uh, soaking. But it's good to have two or three that you can carry on with while you've got something in in, in the uh, in the cleaner. All right, let's uh, just wipe out. Use a lot of paper in this. Oh, I had a bad start. Number one for Patreon. I had a bad start with it. My neighbour phones and to answer my call, which I don't, don't remember making this morning. And it's a lesson: turn your phone off when you're working, which I'm going to do right now because I don't want to. Oh, I know what I can do. I'll put it on silent. Then I don't have to answer it. Right. Just do that. I'll put it on vibrate now. I don't get a lot of phone calls these days. I used to get loads when I was working for myself. All right, a uh, bit of lifting out. Cotton buds very handy. I've got a big, got my big box of them. Can you see the hope? We're in, we're in focus. It's an automatic camera. Let's just get a bit of dark under there, dark shadow now. Um, I've got that negative space, haven't I? That's, that's wrong. Now let's just lift out some of that in between. Bit of air. Right, let's do some of the other side and We're going a bit tacky now. Oh. Well, let's get a brush that I can shape with. Uh,
can see that, so it's just giving me head. Put the headphones on. Some of that out. I'm going to do some sky in a minute. Down into this. Not happy with that shape really, but. It's not a nice shape that. No. Bring it down a bit. Don't want it to compete with the one on the left. Right, let's do a bit of a uh, bit of sky now. Ooh, oh dear! Oh look! I've only just bought this. Oh dear! I did. That's the last thing on there. Put a nail through it later. Right, put a bit of uh, Put something on that horizon, not sure what. But. Right, let's get a bit of dark over the top. Oh. Now, try doing I despair when I'm painting because I, I get my hand in the mess on the palette. My palette is just a piece of uh, um, greaseproof paper. I can just roll it up or cover it with cling film. And we'll see it last for a few days, or well, a couple of days. I suppose my good brush has gone. That's all green. I've been working green all over my fingers once today. <coughs> the ball drops the ball drops out of the holder and fell on the uh, Fell on the palette and I ended up with green everywhere. Right, let's have a bit of, bit of blue now. Blending with some of this in a minute.
a touch of red. Mm. I'll go there. I'm not putting the, uh, don't follow the, the shape of the trees with your clouds. Uh, but we'll have a little bit of, bit of cloud shadow in here. Right, let's get a blending brush or sort of blending brush. A three inch hake that I've never really used for painting. So it takes two the hairs out. The loose one, I should have done this before, but I used it on a demonstration I did last Thursday for a group and oh, those are falling out. Right. It's not that I'm lazy, it's just I'm getting old. Although I've been standing up to paint for years. I'm uh, not standing up, sitting down. I'm quite happy to, to sit down. Just very gently. Oh, I'm going to put some more piece of cloud in there. I tend not to paint in the afternoons while after lunch because I've had enough in the morning. I bike ride in the morning along the River Wandle. Loads of hairs on this. Can't help it. All part of the character, isn't it? Molly didn't worry about it. That's lots of bits of grains of sand in his uh, in his painting. He's painting the coast. But with this blender you get, you get some lovely, lovely effects. And you get some lousy hairs. Okay, well we've got a sky, that didn't take long, 
I'm going to put some trees on that uh, there. So let's just get some. Uh, Put some bushes along that the horizon of these trees. Get out, lift out some uh, uh, right, get some get a texture brush. Put a bit of uh, stuff along that edge. The chips don't last very long, they, they clog up with paint and they My idea of um, putting the chunks in has failed. So we'll uh, do the negative stuff, negative shapes
Well, I'm switching to that again. Right, so a bit of texture in, in there. All right, a bit more dark over here. Touch boil. And then I can etch into that. Out. Uh, sorry about my head, but Oh, we're coming on. There's a bit of a bit of detail. Put some in there. I'll go just uh, use a bit of tissue uh, folded, uh, screwed up at the end just to see if I can. You know you have to push push these. Oh, 
Well, folks, politics in the UK are very interesting at the moment. I want my freedom back. Love Europe, but don't like to be run by them. In my view, See if we can just get a bit more texture in there. This is all about texture. Light against dark. I think that's almost gone off there. That's why I put the pins along here so that holds the board away from this holder here so that I can actually get to the bottom of the board quite easily but because I can't do that now. Right, let's get some text more texture in there, clean the brush and start pushing it around. I put a bit of a bush in here. Just to uh, do your foregrounds quick, get them out of the way. Now I've got to do something on that horizon.
Right, I'm going to put that in, the, in my frame now. So, uh, I'll get it around up here and back. <coughs> I actually had this frame made years ago, getting a bit battered now. Only really for, for display. Right, uh, bear with me. Take that off. Left that. Right, so you can have a look at the Edward Seago rip-off that I had underneath. Well, it wasn't. I, I, I did the fuse the other way from his Norfolk. From his Norfolk uh, coast. Okay. Right, okay. Well, I know that fits because I've tried. Bear with me. I'll just put a few tacks in. Underneath the uh, edge of the frame, <coughs> where the paint, the paint surface hits the frame, I put these some some, uh, some of these veneer pins around to keep the wet paint off of the frame. So I'm going to put quite a few in because if I like this one, I might put it back up on the wall. You get a good, a much better idea of what, how, what the paint is like in, in the frame. Um, I'll put about 12 of these pins in. Also hold it flat. We see go. I've never put this up for sale. This just been on my my wall. But this is completely, totally, and utterly original. Hairs as well. Oh, there we are. Let's bring the camera back and have a look. See what it's like. Oh, good. Well done. Enough wire, it's under the way you waste paper bin. Uh, put the lead back or the power cord, anyway. All right, well, there we are. So, another one bites the dust. I'm not going to do much more to it than that. I could probably just put in a bit of texture, a bit, bit of greener, greener stuff here, but another green. I can't see there. Right, well, there you are. I hope you like that one. It's, uh, as I said earlier, it's the, the largest I've done. Uh, it's like uh, the, the, the grass, the really strong grass that you get in Moreland type of scenes. It's hard really to, to invent a foreground. It's, it's quite a large foreground. It's, it's over a third of the picture. <coughs> oh, I was going to put some uh, some stuff on the floor at the back of the night, so I'll do that. So we have a bit of bit of uh, bit of sap green. Uh, just a little bit. And I'll uh, Mix it with a bit of blue, a bit of blue, 
bit of ultra, a bit of white, now the uh, sun's shining on the paper. Just a bit of distance. Suffering. Okay, just a little cotton bud and just. Ooh, yeah, clean one. Well, I hope that registers. Uh, it's not the best, but but it gives a bit of focus. Okay, right, that's it. Clean up and then go and have some grub. Thanks for looking in, guys. I hope you like that one. See you soon. Bye bye.